Until recently, this caramel corn was a secret family recipe, but recipes this good don't stay secret for long. My name is Corinne Phillips, and this is Fresh Pea Cooks. It's the beginning of December, and for those of you that have followed the channel, you know that I generally keep my cooking whole foods, healthy, really simple, plant-based. That goes out the window in December. December is all about baking. So today I want to show you how to make my Grams' famous caramel corn. It is delicious. It's the best I've ever had. Now, a lot of people will claim that their family recipes are the best, but I have no qualms about foregoing a family recipe for one that's better. But this is truly the best I've ever had. So when I was young, my grandmother and I used to write letters to each other, and in every letter she would include one of her recipes. It was very special for me as a young person, but now that I've gotten older and I've learned to cook, I treasure them even more. So I've made a couple um, changes to my Grams' recipe over the years. She cooked with caro syrup, which is high fructose corn syrup. And that's something that you don't even need to use in your baking. There's a really simple, easy, cheap substitution. It's called invert sugar, and I'll talk more about that later. This recipe comes together in two parts. You have the popcorn, and then you have the ingredients for the caramel sauce. Now, when you're popping popcorn, you wanna pop it over medium-high heat, and you want it to be really, really hot. You want the pan and the oil both hot. And I do that by taking three little kernels and dropping it in, and when those start to pop, then I know my oil is good and hot and my pan is ready. And you need an oil that will take high heat. I prefer coconut oil, um, and sometimes I'll pop my popcorn in ghee, which is really good. But um, for this sake, we're gonna do coconut oil. And then for the caramel sauce, you need brown sugar, invert sugar. Now this is a perfect substitution for caro syrup or high fructose corn syrup. And for those of you that don't want to eat high fructose corn syrup and you wanna eliminate from your diet, Invert sugar is a perfect one-to-one -one substitution. And I'll put a link below of how you make invert sugar. And if you don't wanna make invert sugar, you can buy it. It looks like this, Lyle's Golden Syrup. So that is a equal substitution for corn syrup. You're gonna need butter, baking soda, and salt. Now the baking soda is a vital part of really good caramel corn because you want it to crunch and shatter kind of that caramely um, candy shatter, but you don't want it sticking to your teeth like, like popcorn balls do. And um, temperature and baking soda are the key for that texture change. My paternal grandmother spent her time between Oregon and Idaho, and I didn't grow up with her for a large part of my life. And as a teenager, um, she and I would write to one another. And in every single letter, she would include a handwritten recipe. And she was very particular about her recipes and she didn't just give them to anybody and she was very secretive. Um, so she's probably rolling in her grave right now. But these recipes are so cherished for me these recipes are so cherished by me because they're the only thing I have of hers. And to read them in her handwriting and see her, she had a five star um, rating system and she would always send me four, maybe four stars, five stars, four or five. She would always rate them with stars in the corner, which is really cute. Um, but I really, I really treasure these simple little note cards. So for those of you that are grandmothers or grandfathers and cooks, um, it was a really, really lovely tradition. And being such a gypsy soul, I'm, I'm so amazed that these have actually followed me around throughout my life because I'm not a sentimental person. I don't, I don't throw, I don't keep things. If something doesn't have some sort of functional, useful, tangible value, I generally, pass it on. So I really love highlighting her recipes and letting you all um, in on her secrets and try her wonderful, wonderful candies and cookies. I've got another fudge recipe that I did last year of hers that is 
to die for. It's lovingly known in our house as chocolate butter. I went ahead and pre-popped the popcorn. We need six quarts of popcorn. Um, mm. I used white popcorn. You can use yellow popcorn, which generally pops up a little bit larger. And um, if you pop popcorn in a pot that's significantly larger than what you need, you'll actually um, produce a crispier, lighter, fluffier popcorn because it's not, um, the moisture isn't trapped in a little pan, sweating from the lid and dripping down into your popcorn. So I always pop my popcorn in a really big pot. Now, when I make this recipe at home and I don't have cameras going, I will put my pot on to heat up before I pop my corn. Then in a large saucepan, I'll put all of the caramel ingredients and get that cooking. We wanna bring that up to 248 degrees exactly. If you do it under, it will be chewy. If you do it over, you run the risk of burning it or making it a little too um, hard and candy-like. There's a perfect stage of sugar when you're cooking it and you want to pay attention to those temperatures. So you're gonna need a huge big metal bowl. Now we're gonna put everything in this and bake it in it. So it's important that it's metal. This is a really cheap one, but I love it because there's no rim and it's just really easy. It slides into my oven. It's not too tall, it's not too deep. It has a nice curve to it. This one I got at Ikea and um, I don't remember how much it was. I wanna say it was like $12 or something. Now one of the good things and one of the bad things about this recipe is it comes together really quickly. So it's very easy to make. And unlike a lot of candies, it doesn't take a lot of um, attention or fussing over, which can be kind of problematic for you popcorn addicts because um, it's really hard to not eat once you've made it. Now the reason we're using invert sugar and not regular sugar is many times when you're making candy, sugar has, it runs the risk of crystallizing. And if you change the molecular structure in sugar, or you add two different kinds of sugar, say honey and table sugar, or regular sugar and corn syrup, the, um, for some reason, the sugar is less likely to crystallize. Now to make the caramel sauce, you put everything with the exception of the soda into a large saucepan. And you want a really large saucepan because when sugar syrup or any candy cooks, it generally doubles, triples, quadruples in volume. And you don't want hot, sticky sugar syrup going over into your burners because it makes a really big mess. I know this firsthand, I did it just last week. I'm gonna stir it fairly vigorously to get that butter and sugar all integrated. And then I'm just going to leave it. Once it starts to boil, you don't wanna stir it. Once your caramel sauce is up to temperature, and in our case, it's gonna be 248 degrees, then we'll add in the soda. And be warned that this is going to turn really light brown and it's gonna poof up again and get really foamy looking. While your caramel sauce is cooking, go ahead and add your popcorn to your giant bowl. Once you get all of your soda really integrated and stirred in well, pour the caramel sauce over your popcorn. Gently stir the caramel into your popcorn. Now you wanna be careful because this stuff is 250 degrees. So don't burn yourself, but you also don't wanna break up all of your little corns. You don't wanna break their little wings off. You want those pieces to stay relatively intact. So it takes a little finessing. If you're a stickler and you want all of those pieces evenly coated, um, follow the recipe and use six quarts of popcorn. I use a little more than that just because I like, um, I don't like just really sweet things. So for me, this is a perfect ratio to have this bowl full which is about eight quarts. I might have said earlier that I made a couple of changes to the recipe. I substituted invert sugar 
for the corn syrup. I also add a little bit more salt. The recipe calls for a teaspoon, and I use just a little bit, like kind of a rounded teaspoon, just because I really love sal salted caramel. Boy, I'm in a mess. Keep these for me. Now when I do bake this, I like it to bake evenly, so I'm going to push all of the kernels kind of up towards the edges and make it a little shallower in the middle just so everything gets cooked at about the same rate. Pop it into the oven for 15 minutes, stir it, and repeat that two more times. I have one of these Raytech infrared thermometers and they're really, really great for baking because candy thermometers are kind of messy and you can't fully scrape the sides and the bottom with this thermometer attached to the sides. So there's some cheap ones of these. You can get some for, I, I wanna say around 20 bucks and they're really great for baking.